Okay. Hello there, and welcome to this PowerShell.org tech session entitled, These Aren't Your Father's Commands. My name is Tim Warner, and I'll be your instructor. What we're doing in this video series is working our way step-by-step -step through the big book of PowerShell gotchas published by the DevOps Collective and available for free at Gitbook. You can use the short URL below, timw.info forward slash gotchas. That'll take you directly to the ebook. Today we're concerned with the installment, These Aren't Your Father's Commands. If you're still with me in this video, congratulations, because as you know, I haven't formally defined what the gotcha is. The issue here is understanding how the PowerShell alias system works. For instance, here is an elevated command prompt session, cmd.exe. It's been around since Windows NT, long before Windows PowerShell. And with command.exe, we have commands like dir that'll give you a directory listing. And there are various switches you can add to dir to customize how the command behaves. Now, this is something I've been doing since, wow, late 80s maybe, when MS-DOS first came out. This is why I think Don called this gotcha, these aren't your father's commands, because you may be young enough to not remember the MS-DOS operating system and these commands. But the way that we would get syntax help is do the command name space forward slash question mark. And as you can see here, the dir command has lots of different ways to list files and subdirectories in a directory, including, let me press a key to continue, the S switch that displays files and all subdirectories. In other words, it's a recursive list. So we could go dir forward slash S, and it's just going to keep on going through all subdirectories. I'm going to press, I was going to press control C, which breaks output, but I guess I didn't need to. Now, how does this relate to Windows PowerShell? Let me open up an elevated PowerShell session. Now, if I navigate to that directory where I was just in, in the command prompt session, Windows System 32, and do a DIR, it appears to work. Let me control C that output. Clear the screen with CLS. Actually, CLS is another example of a common Windows command shell tool that appears to work the very same way here in PowerShell. But check this out. If you add something like the S switch that worked perfectly fine in our command prompt session, it tells us that it doesn't understand it. It does not exist. So this reveals something that we actually covered in another gotcha video where we talk about PowerShell.exe not being PowerShell and the difference between PowerShell.exe and CMD.exe. They're based on the same parent process, but the specifics of each interpreter are very different. Okay, so I've gone a long way around explaining. So what is DIR? What is CD? What is CLS? Those are all aliases that the Windows PowerShell development team built to make it easier for those of us who do remember the old Windows command prompt. And even those who come from other operating systems like Mac OS or Linux, you're familiar with the bash shell commands, like PWD, for instance, is going to list your current working directory and ls is going to work just like dir to give you a directory listing. Now let me close out of that session. I have today's script file already loaded up in an administrative instance of the Windows PowerShell ISE. And at the end of this presentation, I'll give you the direct download link. Let's see what we have here. I've divided the script into three parts. The first section I call housekeeping, where you can, for instance, run on line 15 to adjust or relax the execution policy on your system in the scope of the current user. I always recommend that you periodically update your local PowerShell help because PowerShell does not ship with help by default. And then the next three statements you see here allow us to sidetrack just for a moment in terms of the PowerShell profile. There are actually six PowerShell profiles. I'll put up a balloon annotation that gives you a short link to Ed Wilson's excellent article on understanding the different profiles. But profile.currentuserallhosts is one that I like because any aliases that you store in there will be available regardless of the PowerShell host you use. And if we echo that value, we see that my personal profile is under C users Tim Documents Windows PowerShell Profile.ps1. Now that means that we have to have our script execution policy relaxed on our administrative workstation. Test path is a way to quickly determine whether you have that kind of profile defined. False says that it doesn't. And then we can invoke on line 23 new item to create a new copy of that file. That'll come in handy in just a minute. I just wanted to do that as a matter of housekeeping. To get a list of all aliases, you know how it works. We use the relevant get command. Get alias, let me scroll up to the top, gives us an alphabet 
alphabetized list of all of the built-in aliases that are available on your system. And you'll notice here we have some that should jump out to Linux administrators like CAT and CD and CHDIR. Clear would be another one. CLS, Copy, DIR, of course, Diff, Echo. A lot of those date back to the MS-DOS command interpreter as well, you see. This gives you a list of all built-in aliases as well as any custom ones that you've defined that exist in your current run space. If you're wondering what PowerShell command underlies a particular alias, you can simply do get alias and then the name of the alias. As you see here, DIR maps to the PowerShell command get child item. I used a couple others like CLS, and this is going to reveal that whenever we do CLS to clear our console screen, we may think we're using an old MS-DOS command, but we're actually running clear host under the hood. Now, I want you to understand the name and definition parameters, because this allows you to get a little bit more granular. The name parameter of get alias is the actual shortcut, the actual trigger for the alias, and definition is just the opposite. So you can do searches on either of those parameters to get specific alias information, depending upon how you want to go. Now, in PowerShell, the Holy Trinity, the first three commands that any newcomer needs to know are get command, get help, and get member. What we can do in line 37 is pipe get alias into get member, and that will reveal to us the specific properties that we can pull out of that output list. And specifically, we have name and definition. There are several others, but we don't need to go there for now. The get help is super instrumental, especially for commandlets that are a little bit weird, like new alias and set alias. That's a common point of confusion. You can run get help to specifically learn the difference, and the show window flag will put the full help article into a separate dialog box here, a separate window that you can put, for instance, in a separate monitor if you use a multi-monitor setup like I do. Parenthetically, look here, new alias creates a new alias only in the current PowerShell session, and they're not saved after you exit your session. That's an important distinction between new alias and set alias. The third and final section of the course involves creating custom aliases. As the help file just told us, we can use new alias to create a new temporary session-specific alias mapping. So, for instance, we can do a new alias called goto that actually is a mapping to set location. So now this should mean that instead of doing set location to a particular path, we can instead just do go to drive C and notice that it does that just fine. You see what I mean? Now, if we open up a new session, for instance, if I open up an instance of the PowerShell console here, if I invoke go to, say, drive D, we get red on the screen. It doesn't work, okay? Now, the reason why I had us create a new user all hosts profile earlier is that now we can add our custom alias mappings to the profile. I haven't formally defined what the profile does, and I'm sorry about that. The profile is a script that runs every time you start a particular PowerShell host. And as I said, there's six of them. Check this out. I'll just go on to a new line here and invoke the profile automatic variable. And when I use dot notation, we can see four entries right here. All users, all hosts, all users, current host, current user, all hosts, current user, current host. Remember that there are different PowerShell hosts. That actually maps to a related PowerShell gotcha. But anyway, we can open that file into a separate PowerShell tab. And I'm just going to grab this code here, copy it to my clipboard, and then control V to paste it into my profile. And you could either do new alias statements or set alias. Set alias is what I'm accustomed to doing here. The reason I like set alias is that it's more powerful. Notice that in this example, I have a trivial function that starts notepad. And then if I set alias, I can create a trigger called NP that runs that function that I've created. You see what I mean? So it's not just a case that your aliases can only trigger other existing PowerShell commandlets. So let me manually invoke this. Now, you'll, you know now that any new instance of a PowerShell host is going to automatically run this script. As a matter of fact, let me open up a new PowerShell console. And if I do get alias name np, it tells us that the alias exists in this run space. And now if I run np, it immediately opens notepad. So we've just demonstrated the linkage between custom aliases and your profile script. I hope that you found that useful. If you'd like to contribute to the Big Book of PowerShell gotchas, specifically if you spot errors or if you have new ideas for that matter, what you'll want to do is navigate over to the GitHub repository page, create a GitHub account if you don't already have one, fork the project to your account, clone it down to your desktop, 
Use the Git client and whatever markdown tools you're most interested in using to edit or make new files or whatever. Push those changes from your local computer back up to your copy of the repo and finally submit a pull request back to the original repository. I can't promise that your additions will be merged, but it's certainly worth a try. You may want to contact me directly before doing that, actually. And to that point, let me give you my contact information. First of all, thank you very much for taking the time to watch this presentation. You can download the script that I use from my website, timwarnertech.com forward slash father dot zip. The videos for this series are officially housed at youtube.com forward slash PowerShell org. The community page for PowerShell org is what you would expect. And lastly, if you're interested in reaching out to me for any reason, my email address is timothy-warner at pluralsight.com. I'm also on Twitter at techtrainertim. Thanks very much and happy PowerShelling.